Oh, I'm so excited to praise God this morning. I'm so excited to give him the praise today. Yeah, I'm thinking this morning. I'm thinking this morning about what we typically do when a special individual comes to our house. Hallelujah. I'm thinking about how we usually, we say, set out the fine linen and we clean up our home and we get it prepared to receive somebody. Why? Because somebody special is coming to our house. And we may not be in our house, but we're in the house of God. Amen. And I don't know about you, but I want to give God good praise today. Hallelujah. I want to give him special praise. I want him to know that he is welcome in this place. I don't want to give him just like side attention and, and just the leftovers of my day. But I want to make this morning about him. Is anybody with me today? I want to give him good praise. Church, can we do that right now and just lift up your hands and lift up your voice and begin to prepare a praise for him. Oh, if you want to see him, if you want to give him the glory, just prepare a praise. God, we've come to honor you today because we love you and you're special to us today. We love you. We give you glory this day. Come on, saints of the Most High God, and mag magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. How many of you are glad about going to heaven? How many of you are looking forward to the day when you're going to walk You're going to walk oh, on streets of gold. Hallelujah. You're going to go through the gates of Paul. Hallelujah. I can't wait. I can't wait. Come on, clap your hands one more time to the Lord. Come on.
in us. He's going to help us to get there. Come on, lift your hands if you believe God is more than able. He's more than able. Hallelujah. When did I start to forget all of the great things you did And when did I throw my way faith for the impossible How did I start to believe that you weren't sufficient for me And why do I talk myself out of seeing miracles when I know that you you are more than able come on somebody lift your hands and say you are more than able say it again say you are more than able believe he's able 
so much more to the story you're not done with me come on say it. You're, you're not, not done, done with me yet you're not done with me yet come on somebody tell the lord there's so much more there's so much more to the story tell him tell him you're, you're not, not done with There's so much more. There's more to your story. There's more to your story. You're not done. You're not done. You're not done with me yet. I don't care what it 
of the Lord. Lift your hands in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Everybody lift your hands. You're not done with me yet. Come on, say. You're not done with me. There's so much more to this story. You're not done with me yet. You're not done with me yet. Somebody sing it to yourself. You're not done with me yet. There's so much more to the story. You're not done with me. Sing it, sing it. You're not done with me yet. Somebody, this is a prayer to you. You're not done with me yet. Somebody, God came to deliver you this morning There's from so what you've been contemplating. You need to just put your faith in Him. You need to just lay it on the altar because Jesus is not done with you. He's not done with me yet. He's not done with you yet. There's so much more. There's more to your story. My faith said, You're not done. You're not done with me. You're not done with me. You're not done with me. It's gonna happen. Just let the way make her through. He's gonna move. He's gonna move. Can you imagine? With all of the faith in the room, what the hukarobosha, what the Lord can do, what the Lord can do. It's gonna happen. Just let the way make it through. He's gonna move. He's gonna move. I said he's gonna move in your situation. He's gonna move in your body. He's gonna move in your finances. He's gonna move. He's got a miracle waiting for you. He said he's gonna move. He's gonna move. Come on, just.
just let it settle in your spirits today. Come on, just let it settle in your spirits today. Let's not be quick to move on. Let's let it settle in our spirits today. Let's just close our eyes and pray and say, God, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe. I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe. Someone's got to declare it now with your own lips and say, I believe it. I believe, God. I believe. I believe and I'm coming to believe, Lord. I believe and I'm coming to believe more, God. I don't know how to say it quite exactly how I feel it, but I just feel like somebody needs to drink more of that word today. Somebody's longing for a little bit more of that word today. That God is able. That God is able. That God is able. Can we just pray, church, for just a little bit more? Come on. You need a little bit more. Receive it from the Lord today. Oh, receive the word of the Lord today. Oh, the Lord is teaching you how to believe in Him today. Come on, the Lord is teaching you how to believe today. Oh, somebody lift up your hands and say, God, I believe. Oh, not only is he doing it, he is also doing exceedingly, abundantly above. Not only is he doing a work in your life, he is also doing exceedingly, abundantly above what you even think you're going to get. He's already working something that's going to blow your mind. Hallelujah. He's already doing something that will exceed your expectations. Because that's the God that we serve. Come on, that's the God that we serve today. Oh, somebody praise Him if you believe that He's able. Oh, He's able today. He's able, He's able, He's able, He's able. Oh, faith is in the room. Faith is in the room. Today we're going to pray for our city. We're going to pray for our city because this city needs to know of the power that we feel here this morning. And I do believe just as we pray every week, I pray the overflow of God's spirit is going to just push out of this building. Like a river, it's going to flood our neighborhoods. Come on. And God's going to draw souls to the house of God. You know how I know? Because some of you are those souls. You already came to the house of God and God's been saving people. He's been, been baptizing them in the Holy Ghost. We've been seeing this baptism tank with souls going in in the name of Jesus. Some of you are their souls and there's more to come. Come on. There's more to come because God is going to do exceedingly, exceedingly abundantly above. Can we pray church right now? God in the name of Jesus, you're flowing God in this place. Lord, I feel, God, that you're activating our faith today. Lord, you're activating that measure of faith that you have given us, God, to believe in you, God, to believe in you for the supernatural, Father. Lord, we come before you today. The natural wants to deny us revival. The natural wants to deny us revival in this city. But the supernatural is driving us on, God, to believe. But the supernatural, God, is demanding us to believe, God. 
Oh, that you're going to pour out your spirit upon all flesh. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus that your spirit would continue to draw souls, God, to the house of God. That you would continue to draw them in, God. And we demand right now, God, that every principality within the east and the west and the north and the south, God, would release their souls to come to the house of God. That your name would be worshipped, God, and your name would be magnified in this place. By every soul, God, that's tasted of the good word of God. Oh, we love you and we thank you for what you're doing in this place. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Oh, can we just give an ovation to the Lord? Yes, yes, yes. Oh, God, we recognize it's you in this place, Lord. We recognize it's you in this place. There are so many needs in the body of Christ this morning, but we know that God is able. Today, we do want to mention a few families that need us to pray for them. We want to mention today the Keogh family, the Colic family, the Freeman family, the Johnson family. All of them have had loved ones that have passed away. There's nothing that can replace a loved one who you know will never be there ever again. But we know that this life is not the end. And we know that life continues on. And for those that believe they're in heaven right now, hallelujah, glorifying the name of Jesus Christ. But families still need the comfort of God and comfort of the Holy Ghost. And for those of you who perhaps have lost a loved one in this most recently, there are testimonies in this place of the comfort of Jesus Christ. Anybody have that comfort? Anybody have that testimony that God is able to comfort? He's able to bring peace that surpasses all understanding. We need to keep them in prayer. The service for uh, Bertram Johnson is going to be on Thursday on October the 26th. If you're able, come on out to the West Lane Sanctuary. The viewing will be to 12 to 1 p.m. And the service is going to be 1 to 3 p.m. Also, our beloved brother Tom Freeman went to be with the Lord. And we are keeping the Freeman family in our prayers. We know that it is an incredible, an incredible uh, testimony to see an individual who has run his race to the end. Amen. And that is what we want to experience one day ourselves, that the Lord would tell us, come on in, good and faithful servant. Hallelujah. Enter into the glory of the Lord. The Tom Freeman funeral will be next Monday on October the 30th. And if you are able, again, come on out because it's important. It's going to be October 30th at 10 a.m. in the West Lane Sanctuary. It's important to be a church that prays and a church that loves, not just in word, but also in deed. So even as we pray for them, if you know anyone of them that's around you, reach out your hand and reach out your encouragement because through the body of Christ, healing is ministered to others. How many know that? How many believe that today? If anyone has a need this morning, I'm here to reiterate the song that we just sung. We felt that faith just rise in us. God is able. If you need a healing in your body, if you need a healing in your family, if you need God to provide for you, God is able today. And I, want, I wonder if you can just lift your hand in faith. If anybody has a need today, I see so many hands throughout the building so many people that are believing that God is going to intervene. Church, how about we pray for each other? Let's pray for the body of Christ and gather around anybody who may have their hand up. And we're going to pray for them today in Jesus' name and believe that God, hallelujah, that God is going to show up in the name of Jesus. Church, let's pray today. God, in Jesus' name, Lord Father, we come before you, Jesus. We feel faith, God, in our spirits to believe in you for the impossible, Lord. We know that you're working in our midst, God. You're working among us, Lord Jesus. And I pray right now in Jesus' name, God. In Jesus' name, according to your word and the authority of your name, God. 
We pray healing, God, in bodies right now. Cancer to dry up today, God. Bodies to fully recover and heal, God. We pray for provision, God, uh, because we're trusting in you to supply every need according to your riches and glory, God. In the name of Jesus, Lord, begin to move in their lives, Lord, uh, and show them that you're able, God. Let testimonies arise, God. Let testimonies arise, God, from this prayer, Lord, uh, as we believe in you, God, and give you the glory for all that you are doing. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. Amen. You may take your seats today for a few moments. We do have a few announcements. Hallelujah. Each one of these announcements and these events are important for the body of Christ to come together. Amen. And be united as one. Amen. How many know what we do in fellowship out there affects the church, inside the church? When we are of one mind and one accord, the Lord shows up. Hallelujah. We have an all-church harvest party this Saturday, October the 28th at 4 p.m. Is anybody going to be there at the church harvest party? Amen. It is a blessed time. We're going to be under the pavilion. There is going to be a potluck, to, so make sure to bring a, di a dish or dessert to share and your lawn chair. Amen. And your lawn chair. Also, uh, for our, our children, you're able to dress up however. It is very important to remember, no scary costumes. No scary costumes for our children. Amen. Candy donations are accepted. We are also having a trunk or treat and a cakewalk and fall themed des uh, dessert signups in the lobby after service. Make sure to come out there. Amen. And participate. Baby dedication on October 29th. Amen. Somebody say revival. Hallelujah. Baby dedication, October 29th. Register your child at clministry.com slash baby dedication. It's now time for our Sunday morning, morning tithe and offering. <laughs> Hallelujah. Can we stand to our feet today? And we are going to declare this scripture as we have done every service. Repeat with me. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house. And prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground. Neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts. Upon the authority of the word of God, we declare that the Lord is our provider. As one who tithes and gives offerings, I am entitled to his blessings and protection from the attacks of the enemy. Therefore, I bring my tithe and offering into your storehouse today, knowing that my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches in glory. For employees, we claim good jobs, raises and bonuses, sales and commissions, promotions Motions and benefits and favor with our employers and customers in the workplace. For business owners, we claim favorable contracts and growth and that these businesses will be profitable and a blessing to the kingdom. For his people, the Lord shall supply income, inheritances, his states, interest, rebates, unexpected gifts and blessings, bills and debts will be paid off, allowing me to live debt free. Since spiritual blessings follow the giver, I declare that my whole family is saved and in relationship with God. We receive perfect health, healing, deliverance, and walking in the divine favor of, and blessing of the Almighty. I am blessed coming in and going out, and all that I put my hand to do will prosper in Jesus' name. God bless you as you give this morning. On the floor you may march, and in the balcony they will wait on you.
Amen, amen, amen. Church, can we stand to our feet today? I just want to point out how many appreciate the ministry of our ushers this morning. Let me tell you, they serve the body of Christ day in and day out, and we love them, and we know that God's hand is upon them. Also, I want to welcome all of our visitors here this morning. Can we give them a hand for being here in the house of God? You are welcome here in this place. Amen. You are welcome to come and worship. We have a room that's dedicated specifically to our visitors. It's called our Genesis room. It's to my right and to your left. We have a big sign that says Genesis room. We want to invite you to come on in. If it maybe you've been here for the first time, two or three times, come on in and have some coffee with us. We'd love to get to know you. And there we can answer any questions that you might have about Christian Life Center. Amen. Church, why don't you turn around and say hi to somebody? Be friendly, be family. Ask them, are you going to the harvest party? Amen. And make sure to get as many, and maybe get together and get a plate to take. Amen. God bless you. Well, praise God. Is anyone ready for the Word of God this morning? Come on. Hallelujah. Come on. Is anybody ready for the Word of God today? Can we stand to our feet one more time? I thank you so much for staying standing. We've been up and down all service long, but I think it is very good that we stand today I don't know about you, but I'm so excited. Every time I hear this man of God preach, I am absolutely blessed and my life is changed. Amen. We are so honored to have once again Pastor Mark Morgan here to deliver the word of the Lord. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Let's clap and magnify the Lord together today, would you? Amen. I mean, really give him praise here this morning. We praise him according to his excellent greatness. Amen. Well, God bless you this wonderful fall morning. Amen. And uh, it's good to be Stockton today. And uh, I have one more service today, and then it's been a very, very hectic week. And so, but I'm all right. Amen. Give honor to your leadership today and uh, thank the Lord for the Haney family and all the staff and for the wonderful people of God. You are our job security. And as long as there are saints, 
we have a job. Amen. Turn around and shake someone's hand. I know you already did, but tell them, I proclaim victory over you. Amen. Genesis chapter 3 in verse number 5. For God doth know that the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. For God doth know that in the day you eat thereof, that your eyes shall be opened and ye shall be as gods. Everybody said amen. Thank the Lord for his word. Amen. I want to talk to you today on this subject, trying to obtain what you've already obtained. Trying to obtain what you've already obtained. And I'm going to preach a little today, counterculture, Pentecostal culture. So I could be wrong, but I don't think so. So I'm going to preach what I feel in the Holy Ghost today. And this is something that God's been dealing with me about recently. So I'm going to share it with you. And uh, we hope the Lord will have his way. Amen. Jesus, thank you for this church. Thank you for the leadership of this church. And I pray a blessing upon all. I ask you to help us today, God. Give me clarity of mind and spirit. Help me to speak your word. Nothing less, nothing more. I ask you that you will confirm your word and I exercise your authority in this place today in Jesus name. Everybody said, amen. amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Amen. This uh, Genesis account of creation is just so much to it. There's just so much to it. Sometimes we just kind of skim over it. And as I preached here a few weeks ago, that all of these things here in this story relates to us today. We learn spiritual things by watching natural things. So the Genesis account of creation ought to intrigue you. I teach very strong that just as there was seven creative days, that there are seven creative days in your life. And that the plight where the world was at, the Bible says it was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. If you're honest with yourself, that's the description of you when God found you. Two things that cause creative power. Number one, the Bible says, and the Spirit of the Lord moved upon the face of the deep, and then it says, and God said, one translation says that the Spirit of the Lord brooded over unfulfilled potential. And I think that that happens every time we come to the house of God and we sense the presence of God among us. But it's still unfulfilled potential. Nothing really happened until God spoke. Two things that we need to create or to release creative power. We need the moving of the Spirit of God, and we need the Word of God. I think if you look back to the day that God saved you, that you could say both of those were active in your life. The Spirit was doing its work, and the Word was doing its work, and then you become a new creature in Christ Jesus. I thank the Lord for this salvation that we experience. You glad for the Holy Ghost today? You glad for water baptism? Amen. Thank the Lord for that. Then it starts the creative days, light, separation, dry land, moon, stars, sun. Uh, what's the next one? Uh, the blessing of life creates life, calls it the blessing. And then the sixth day, God finally gets through the previous five days what he's after. See, he couldn't create Adam as long as everything was fluid. He had to have dry land in order to create Adam. So all those creative days are dealing with you also. 
light, separation. Uh, all of a sudden, you're not tossed to and fro with every wind of doctrine, but you are becoming firm in what you believe. You're becoming solid in what you believe. Then, of course, uh, the moon, stars, sun, and all that, that's the beginning of time. In time, there are purposes. There's a purpose to everything in life. And so then the next thing is the blessing of life and the resources of God. And then, of course, on the sixth day, which is the number of man, God finally gets what he's really after. That's us in his likeness and in his image. Praise God. I thought that was pretty good. Amen. Praise God. <laughs> I thought it was. Maybe you didn't think it was all that great. Amen. Now, we get of all that that happens, and then God reaches into the dirt, forms Adam, breathes into his nostrils. He becomes a living soul. And uh, then, then, uh, God puts him to sleep. And I preached on this here a few weeks ago. God puts him to sleep. Uh, Adam comes to, and God has the surprise of all surprises, a woman. Amen. <laughs> oh, boy. I'm already winning friends and influencing people here today. I read a deal that uh, said that uh, if you spell the word knife, the K is silent. And then it gave you several things, the way they were spelled, and then what letter was silent in it. And then, I mean, it gave four or five of those, and then it said wife. And then out beside it, it said the husband is silent. <laughs> Ooh, praise God. Mm, maybe I should have left that out. I don't know. Amen. And then, of course, the instructions that God gave, pretty simple instructions. They really were pretty simple instructions. Uh, don't eat the fruit of the tree. If you eat the fruit of the tree, you'll die. Now, we know that when they ate it, they didn't die in the physical sense, but they did die spiritually. And so now here's Eve down there at the tree. I don't think it was just a one-time visit. I think that she just kept looking at it and looking at it and looking at it. And I think that your enemy also observes what you are constantly looking at. Then he knows how to form a weapon against you, how to attack you. And so she's there. The conversation begins. Uh, have the Lord, what has he told you? And of course, Eve said, well, he said this and and uh, told us not to eat the fruit of the tree. If we did, we'll die. Of course, as I said the other day, Adam added some things. God didn't tell them if you touch the fruit, but he did say if you eat the fruit. We have to be careful when we add to the Word of God. Because we tell people things that's not really in the Scripture, and when they do those things, if there's, there's not spiritual repercussions then they question everything that you've told them. And so I'm convinced that when she touched it, she didn't die. She thought, well, it's okay to eat the fruit of the tree. And so here we are. Now, if you'll watch this in our text, this is a part of what the serpent said to her, which I believe was an angel of light. For God doth know, God doth know that in the day you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open and you shall be as gods. Everybody say, as gods knowing good and evil. Now, I don't know about you, but I've always believed that when God created Adam and Eve, not just Adam, but also including Eve, that he created something in his likeness and in his image. Image has to do with the uh, appearance. Image has to do with what you can see. If you'll remember uh, Jesus, they come to him and said, uh, are your people supposed to pay taxes and, and all this stuff and on? He said, well, do you have a coin? And they said, we do. He said, well, then uh, what inscriptions on it? What images on it? They said, Caesar. He said, then render unto Caesar the things that are Caesar's and unto God the things that are God's. In other words, just look at where the image of Caesar is 
and you give that to God or you give that to Caesar. But he also said, just look for the thing that is created in the image of God and give that to God. That is the premise of all of our separation. That is the premise of all of our holiness teachings. You were created in the likeness and the image of God and you are to give yourself back to him. Somebody ought to say amen. You were created in the likeness and the image of God. Now, when I'm teaching this in another lesson, what I say is, is that Adam bore the image of God. Of course, then Eve comes from the side of Adam. They're bearing the image of God, but image is, is container. Content, likeness is the content. Adam kept the image of God, but he lost what was in the image. He lost the likeness of God. I don't know if I'm making sense or not. He still looks like the way God created him. He still looks the way that God formed him in his image, but now he's lost the likeness of God. He's now separated from the likeness of God, the nature of God. Now here's the thing, when the serpent told Eve, that he knows, God knows, that the day that you eat the fruit of that tree, You'll be like him. That's the problem. He doesn't want you becoming like him. That is humanity's battle all the way from the tree. We want to become our own God. That's how come iniquity shall abound. Because iniquity is you removing the law of God and you establishing your own law. And then you become God. And then when you want to get to Romans chapter 1... All of a sudden, we become the creator, and then we're not the creation anymore, but we're the creator. We are now God. And I can image myself any way I want to image myself. Well, yeah, that went over real well. I don't know how many more pronouns we're going to find. If we keep on, we're going to have the whole alphabet. But the fact is, is that's man deciding he's the creator. He's going to create what he wants to create. So when they do that, they change the glory of God, which is what's revealed, us. They change the glory of God. And then once you change the glory of God, a few verses later it says, and they change the truth of God. Meaning once you start tampering with what bears God's glory, the next thing you've got to do is start tampering with the truth. Amen. Well, are we getting off to a rough start here today? The day you eat the fruit of the tree, God knows you'll become like him. You will be able to discern good and evil. Now, this is what he's telling them. This is what he's offering them. God just doesn't want you to eat the fruit of that tree because you'll become like him. And so Eve, you know, she decides, hey, that's a pretty good deal. I want to be like God. I want to know good and evil. I want to be like God. Now, Eve, why are you trying to obtain something you already have? You were created in the likeness and in the image of God. Now, I, I don't want to mess with you too much here today, and, and I don't want to get into this because this is, a, you know, uh, it, it's quite a discussion. But when you deal with God, you're not just dealing with masculine, you're dealing with masculine and feminine. And the completion of that is when masculine and feminine are joined back together. There are titles that are given to God that are in the feminine. Ever heard of El Shaddai? That's feminine, means the many-breasted one. So when you're dealing with God, you have to understand just like creation, you're dealing with masculine and you're dealing with feminine. But all of this has been created in the likeness and in the image of God. So the devil is offering her something that she already had. The enemy always wants to try to get you to obtain something that God has already given you. I told you I'm going to mess with your theology here today. He already told them, created them to be like him. And the enemy is trying to offer them something. And Eve and Adam are trying to obtain something that God had already given them. I see a lot of that in Pentecost. We're always trying to obtain something 
that God has already given us. Well, fasten your seatbelt, amen. You know, it's another, let me give you another little story before I really dive into this. You know, you got Moses and he'd already smitten the rock and, and then God tells him, said, you know, go speak to the rock, just go speak to the rock. And then of course the Bible says that the people were chiding with him. In other words, they were irritating him. I've met a few folks that just irritate me, amen. And uh, <laughs> they're chiding with him and Moses gets upset. And instead of speaking to the rock, he smites the rock. That cost him going into the promised land. You're not going to go now. Why? Because you smote the rock. You were supposed to speak to the rock, not smite the rock. Well, what in the world would God judge him so harshly over just hitting a rock with a stick? Well, because that rock was Christ. And Christ was only to be smitten one time. He was only to be taken to Calvary one time. And once that rock was smitten and water's flowing out of it, we don't hit him again. We learn to speak. Why do you want to take him back to Calvary when he's telling you it's already done? This is the finished work of Calvary. It is already done. Well, praise God. I said, it's already done. What in the world can you add to Calvary? No, seriously, what can you add to Calvary? Now, just get ready because, you know, they may fire me after today's service. I don't know. They may want the check back. I don't know. But you're not getting it. I can tell you that right now. Amen. <laughs> we have a tendency to always be trying to obtain stuff that God's already given us. He's already given us. Now, I want to be honest, and I want to put a disclaimer out here, all right? I preached here one time about portals. My son, John Mark, preaches about gates. He said, Dad, you took the very best sermon I have, and you're preaching it. Now, people's going to think I got it from you. <laughs> Disclaimer. The other day he was talking to me and said, you know, Dad, he said, if you look at the story of David and Goliath, he said, David was not fighting for a victory. David was fighting from victory. And when he said it, I thought, oh. So I called him the other day. I was in Texas preaching. I called him the other day and I said, tell me that little deal again about for or from. He said, nope, not going to tell you. You'll preach it. He's supposed to be watching the service right now, so I'm giving you credit. I'm letting everybody know where it come from. I kind of thought it come from God, but apparently, you know, <laughs> you were the conduit that he delivered the content. There you go. And so I, here, here's, what I want, here's what I want to t t tell you. Have you ever just listened to us talk? Now here's where I'm going to rattle you a little bit. Why in the world do we think, boy, this is going to go over real well, that we have to pray and fast for the victory? Now, I know praying and fasting makes you look spiritual. All right, here we go. Get ready. Here it is. Jesus comes down off the mountain. The disciples trying to cast devils out of that lunatic, and they couldn't do it, and Jesus cast them out. And then he says, this kind goeth not out but by prayer and fasting. So that's what we believe. We believe unless you're praying and fasting, you can't cast the devils out. I hate to tell you, but Jesus had moved from casting devils out to addressing their unbelief. What he's telling them is, you really have the authority to cast them out. I gave that to you when I sent you out two by two. Your problem is your flesh. Not those devils, it's your flesh. 
and in your flesh is unbelief. And the way that you deal with your flesh is to pray and fast. You are disciplining yourselves to get past your flesh. You are not buying a miracle. I will say it again. You're not bargaining with God. I'll fast two weeks. I'll pray two hours a day, but this is what I want. I hate to tell you, that's not the way that God operates. He honors your faith. He honors your praying, but praying and fasting is not me being able to purchase something from God because if you get down to it, he's already paid for it himself. And what in the world can you add to what he's already done? Praise God. I know people walk around all the time trying to act spiritual, mystical. I was in a meeting one, boy, I've got some of you just, you, I don't know about all that. I was in a meeting one time, the old boy sitting there down at the end of the table, and the whole time he's over there going, <laughs> if you have to tell me you're spiritual or act like you're spiritual, you are not spiritual. I finally, after two days, I just, me and my crazy sense of humor, Brother Howe was directing the meeting. I said, Brother Howe, can I ask this guy a question? He said, sure. I said, sir, are you in pain? He said, what? I said, you're in pain. He said, well, no. I said, well, you're acting like you're in pain. I'm trying to figure out what's going on with you down there. I mean, this whole time you act like you're really in pain. Of course, he hated me after that. I said, I disrespected his ministry. I told him, I didn't disrespect your ministry. You disrespected your own ministry by trying to act that away. That went over like a flock of dogs, amen. Why are we trying to obtain what we've already obtained? Either he has given you the victory or the word is a lie. So why do you think that you have to fight for the victory? Mm. I'm going to go a step further. If you pray and fast and go around the country bragging about it. Now, I'm telling you, I'm serious. They, they, you may never invite me back, but here's the whole deal. You know, Jesus said if you pray and fast and you talk about it, whatever recognition you get from man, that's your reward. So if I'm really trying to do it the Bible way, I'm not going to get up and make you think that I'm more spiritual than you are because I've done X, Y, and Z. you got to be careful when you get there lest spiritual pride takes over. And you think because you've done this that you've earned something from God. Boy, Brother Morgan, it sounds like you're against praying and fasting. I'm, not, I'm for praying, not much for fasting, but I'm for praying, I can tell you that right now. <laughs> That's my burden to bear right there. I'm, I'm not against praying and fasting. I'm just trying to put it in the right perspective. God has already given you the victory. You ever heard this? I take authority in the name. I've, I've said that all my ministry. I take authority in the name of Jesus. Why do I have to take something he's already given me? I don't have to take authority. I need to learn how to exercise authority. I need to learn that I'm not after victory. I'm not after authority. He's already given it to me. I just need to learn how to open my mouth and say what he wants me to say and exercise his authority. I need a little help here right now. All right. Maybe this one ought to be a short one today. Now let's, uh, let's look at a verse. You want to look at a verse? Colossians chapter 2 and verse number 10. Can you put it on the screen for me? 
I'm sorry, I'm not organized enough to give it to you ahead of time. What does that say? What, what, what does that say? Say it out loud. And you are, let's, let's say it again, and you are in who? Which is the head of all principalities and powers. So when you're in him, there's no lack. You're not trying to obtain something when you're in him. You already got it. You're not trying to knock the devil down. He's already done it. You're not trying to win the victory. He's already won it for you. Mm. All right, I, I feel a little headwind here today. Let's look at something else. You want to look at something else? This is not a verse, but I just want to give you that verse so you know I'm in the Bible. I, I was in a session yesterday, and the, the praise team sang this song. I don't, I don't know what song it is, but they, they, this is some of the words in it. It says, holiness has a name, and it's Jesus. Victory has a name, and it's Jesus. The Word has a name, and it's Jesus. Redemption has a name, and it's Jesus. Peace has a name, and it's Jesus. Healing has a name, and it's Jesus. Victory has a name, and it's Jesus. So when you say Jesus, see, you've got to change this around to where you understand it's not about the spirit of something, it's about who he is. I know that I'm, I'm having a hard time explaining what I see. In other words, victory is not about a feeling. It's about the man, Christ Jesus. Amen. Peace. Uh, a lady that I have a lot of respect for, she's a great prayer warrior, she called me the other day and she said, it's amazing to me that all we talk about is the peace of God. She said, but the Bible says that he is the God of peace. And she said, you know what, Brother Morgan, we're waiting for the peace of God when the fact is when we have Christ, he is peace. When you have Christ, there is salvation. When you have Christ, there is healing. Hmm. When you have Christ, there is holiness. You're not trying to obtain it. When you accepted him and you are complete in him, you got the total package. You got it all. Mm. Mm. All right. I'm about done. Some of you ought to be shouting right now. I bind the devil. I cast the devil out. What's the name of the prince of this city? I was talking to some boys one time. They said they was in a prayer meeting, and, man, they were all waxing bold and, you know, doing all this. And finally they said, we demand the prince of this city to give us his name. And you've always got one carnal person. It's usually me, amen. And uh, he starts in like, woo, it's coming to me. It's coming to him. They're all like, this is great. And, oh, I, I, I'm getting it. I'm getting it. And, oh, this is it. And they said, what is it? He said, Bob. <laughs> mm. <laughs> do, do, do you have a, a camera on your phone? If you do, take it out. Take your phone out. Turn your camera on. Spin it around where it's facing you. Okay? You got it? You got oh, is it? What what you see right now? See you? Okay. I'm going to show you the devil. <laughs> that you have to fight. 
not principalities, not powers. Christ has already subdued all of that. Your problem is what's looking at you from your phone right now. And if you can beat it, you can beat anything. Somebody ought to give the Lord praise right now. See, here's how the enemy works, okay? The enemy works through speaking to you, and the way he speaks to you is through thoughts. I taught a seminar at conference two or three years ago. I don't think it went the way they wanted it to go because the whole thing was about spiritual warfare and taking authority over stuff and all the stuff. And I said, well, here's the deal. I said, uh, the enemy works. Okay, let me put it to you like this. The sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Every kingdom has a sword. It's his word. So not only does God have a sword of the spirit, but the enemy has a sword of his spirit. It's his words. The real battle is not you locking yourself in and praying and fasting till you subdue something. The real battle is for you to learn how to conquer him. Right there. Maybe there's a reason that Jesus was crucified at the place of the skull. So just as God's word speaks to you, trying to get you to think this way, the enemy works through the same thing. So when you start talking about, when you start talking about victory and you start talking about taking dominion or overcoming something, what that means to me is I didn't go down to the church and pray and fast for 20 days and God finally gave me something. I don't think that's the way that victory really works. I think that vic victory works when you think totally opposite of the way the enemy wants you to think. Spirits control thinking. Thinking and actions produces culture. I pastored for 10 years in an area that was bound by poverty. It really was. It was bound by poverty. The Lord began to deal with me about it, and this is when he began to show me. That spirit speaks to them. It controls their thinking. It controls their mind. It's telling them that their grandpa was broke, their dad was broke, they're going to be broke. Grandpa didn't have anything. Dad didn't have anything. I'll never have anything. It has controlled, it has controlled their thinking for generations. If you get enough people that think that away in an area, now that thought or that thinking becomes a reality and people just live controlled by that thinking. Boy, I don't know if this is getting across or not. So that's when I begin to preach very strongly the blessing of God. Salvation's lift, redemptive lift. I begin to preach to them, I don't care what your grandpa was. I don't care what your daddy was. You're a new creature in Christ Jesus. You need to go to the word of God, which is his sword, and you need to read about what God wants to do for you. And I don't care what he didn't do or what your daddy and grandpa didn't have. I need you to read the word of God and let God proclaim to you what he's already done and what he's already given you. Then you can start thinking that away, and then you can open your mouth, and it just, I don't know how all this works, but Logos is the thought of God. Rima is the spoken thought of God. So God starts putting his word in you. He starts putting his thoughts. That Bible is the thoughts of God. Well, I like to know the will of God. Good. Pick up your Bible and read it. Quit sitting there in prayer somewhere waiting on God to speak to you. If it's in the Bible, you don't have to pray about it. You don't have to fast about it. That is the thought of God. That is the will of God. We cannot afford to go back to the rock 
and hit it again. Adam and Eve lost paradise because they were trying to obtain something they already had. Moses lost the promised land because he's trying to obtain something that he had already obtained. Pentecostals in the end time are going to have to wake up or we're going to be so overwhelmed by everything that's going on. And we're going to see all the nonsense that's taking place in our world right now and all the crisis that's in our world right now, especially now. And if we're not careful, we're going to be overcome by that because the enemy is going to start controlling our thinking. And then he's going to produce fear. You ready for it? Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Fear comes by hearing and hearing by the word of the devil. And you just give your mind to him and let him keep putting thoughts in you and how bad it is and is the church going to survive and are we going to make it? And I mean, my God, is anybody going to be saved? I'm telling you, that's not coming from God. That's not victory. That's fear. That's doubt. That's unbelief. You need to get yourself in the word of God and find you some good verses about it and open your mouth and say it. I am more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus which strengtheneth me. I am complete in him, and he is the head of all principalities and powers. Nothing else is the head of it except him. Somebody ought to rejoice in the victory. If the enemy's got a sword, you got a sword, you're going to have to learn to be a skillful swordsman. You're going to have to learn to discern when it's the enemy and when it's God. Somebody, I, I get this question all the time. Hey, you know if it's God or the devil? I, to me, it's kind of simple. When the devil speaks to you, he ends it with a question mark. When God speaks to you, he ends it with an exclamation point. The devil always leaves you hanging with a question. Hath God said Question mark. The enemy wants to put you into questioning, questioning God, questioning the power of God, questioning the word of God, questioning the authority, questioning, questioning, questioning. Do I have it? Do we have it? What's going to happen? All the stuff and all. We need to get away from the question mark and get to the exclamation point to where it's being proclaimed. The church needs to open its mouth and not try to take victory or take authority, we need to open our mouths and proclaim the authority that God has already given us. Okay, all right, all right. I know you're waiting on me to pull the rabbit out of the hat. God, God gave me something the other day, and I've been preaching this, and uh, we got a lot of hyphen, student age, next generation, all right? Let me just say this in passing. David fights Goliath and wins. Years later, he's older. He's older. And uh, he's fighting a giant by the name of Ishbabanab. Man, how would you like to have that name? What's your name? Ishbabanab. <laughs> yeah, your mom and daddy must have been smoking something when they named you, boy. <laughs> And uh, if you read the story, that giant was killing David. The Bible says that David was waxing faint and that that giant said, I'm going to kill him. And then a guy by the name of Abishai come into the story. And the Bible says he secured David. He secured David. David got the victory. After that happens, the men of Israel came to David and said, no more battles for you, lest the light of Israel go out. We don't want you fighting giants. We want you to teach us how to fight giants. But just listen. Every generation has a giant. If you look at the spear of Goliath, if I remember right, it was made out of iron. When you look at and, and had a certain weight. When you look at the spear of Ishbabanab, I think it was made out of brass, had a certain weight. It's the same giants, they just have different weapons. 
and every generation has to fight a giant with maybe a different weapon. I'm just going to be honest with you. I fought my giant, but I can't fight yours. Are you listening? This older generation, we fought our giants. And I think we probably got the victory. We're here. But I'm too old. I don't have enough energy to fight your giant. Now, I can tell you how to fight it. And that's what I'm trying to do right now, is to tell this next generation how to fight the giant in their generation. This generation to me is weird. Seriously. I mean, I, I just, I don't get them. I think that this generation ought to have the strongest thumbs in the history of mankind. And I mean, they're constantly You can't even carry on a conversation with them. And selfies. They're always taking the picture from up here, right? Because it makes them look slimmer, right? That's what they say. I mean, some of you got to get it way. And it's, it's, it's all this technology stuff. It's social media. You know, I got, a, I got a Facebook account, two of them, the church and my personal. Uh, I, I think it went from it, Instagram to X, right? I don't think y'all are that holy. And I have an account with that. I have people all the time, Brother Morgan, y'all to be posting stuff. Why? I don't want to post stuff. Leave me alone. I guess on Facebook, I am what they call a troll. I, I'm not going to hardly put anything on there. But I'll go down through there because people on there will tell you all of their business. Some of them, I'm like, dear God, is there anything private about you? I just don't understand because, now, here's the deal. I'm about done. I read a book by Dr. Leonard Sweet, and this is what he said. He said, anybody born before 1963 is now considered an immigrant in society because we come from a word-oriented society. People born after 63 are now a part of a digital society. So it went from slow to extremely fast. It went from chalkboards, lectures, and books to iPads, computers, from slow to fast. I can't hardly make that adjustment, and I got people around me that can. Matter of fact, my two grandkids, Zoe and Jude, know a whole lot more about it. I used to say, hey, Jeremy, come in here. I need help. Or, hey, John Mark, come in here. I need help. Now I just ask for my 13 and 12-year-old grandkids. Hey, come in here. I need help. And they're in there. Yang, 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 yang. And it's like, <laughs> Papa, all you got to do is this. I mean, I, I do a deal on Tuesday nights called Family Chat, and it's always on Facebook under the church and all. And, and I'm constantly calling them saying, now, how do I get on that again? And they'll go, we showed you 50 times in the last two months. Uh -huh. See, we had things that tried, we had to fight. We had our battles. Now you got to fight all this stuff that's trying to take your mind and trying to take your time. It wants to control your thinking. You ever heard of Google? You can be sitting in a church service and the pastor say something, and you get home, I'm going to Google it.
There you go. I found this website. I hate upc.com. I hate clc.com. And there's going to be some disgruntled person on there telling you exactly opposite of what the word said or the man of God said. Boy, this is getting tight right now. You, 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 you got to understand how the enemy works. You know how to bring division into a church? Can, can, I, can I just do? Is, uh, is Sister Haney here or no? Okay. Do we have one of the assistants here, his wife? Are, are any of your assistants married? Is Laird here? Come on up here, Larry, and, and, and bring, bring your wife with you. Come on, darling. <laughs> it's good to see you again, at least in the right time zone. <laughs> okay, let's, let's just do this. Let's say that he is, I want, you, I want you to sit on that pew right there if you don't mind. And um, I hope I look as good at, at your age as you do right now. But here's the problem, I'm already there. <laughs> now here's how it works, you ready for it? So let's say he's the pastor and he's up here and he's been taking a lot of offerings, right? And so you're at McDonald's and you're sitting there with some of the other people of God and it usually comes across like they're being spiritual. Mm. And then the tears. I want you to know I'm not gossiping. And I'm not saying this in a negative way. But have you ever noticed that after we take those offerings, she comes in with a new pair of shoes? This is how you destroy faith in a congregation. So you're like, now I'm not saying that's what happens, but the way it appears, and I am concerned. So now the next time you come to church, you can't get your mind on what's going on in the service. Oh my God, I was looking new. It must be true. You need to learn, number one, how to tell people. Do I look like a trash can? Take your garbage and your trash somewhere else. I don't want to hear it. I'm not saying this is going on, but this would be my answer. Well, it may be true. He may be taking all those offerings and buying houses and putting her in shoes and all that stuff and all. If he did, he'll stand before God and answer for it. But the moment I put it in the offering plate, I gave it to God. Now it's up to God to judge what happens to it and where it goes. But I'm not going to let you get in my mind and start planting questions in my mind, trying to discredit authority and the church. I'm not going to let you do it. I'm going to protect my mind and what I allow in it. Because I don't need some thought. God, I, you can sit there, just stay there. I may pick on you again in a little bit. <laughs> let, let, me let me just say this closing. Uh, first of the year, I was at another conference the week before Landmark. I got down there and had a lot of physical problems. I mean, just, and so I come back. I got to feel a little bit better. So then I come to Landmark. Well, I was at Landmark. All of a sudden, I started feeling run down. Matter of fact, the last night I was sitting up here and I could hardly sit there. I was just like, huh. well, thank you, Landmark, for giving me COVID. <laughs> so I get COVID. Then I get home, and when I have bouts with COVID, it affects my heart rate. And so I went from COVID into AFib. And uh, trying to work on it, trying to get it taken care of, 
they, they, he, I used to take one heart medicine a day. He said, take four. It wasn't even touching it. And so finally, finally I had to go in and they did a cardio version. They had to shock me back into rhythm. That's a wonderful experience right there. Matter of fact, I had it done the year that COVID hit, the 1st of April. COVID patients are now in the hospital, in the ICU. At about four something in the morning, my door was cracked open and I seen all these hazmat people coming down through there, going to ICU to treat COVID patients. So my doctor comes in and says, we need to do the cardio version, but the problem is, I don't remember, he said, your blood pressure's too low or something's too low, so we're going to have to take you to ICU to do it. And I said, well, isn't that where the COVID people are? Yeah, but, you know, you'll be protected, you'll be fine. So we get in there, and the anesthesiologist looks at me and says, now because whatever it was that's so low, I can't sedate you like I normally would. I said, what's that mean? He said, that means you're going to fill this one. <laughs> Whoo. Brother, did I ever fill it? It's like getting hit in the chest with a Mack truck doing about 100 miles an hour. So I had that happen. And then I had a, uh, what do they call it, a hematoma come up on this hip muscle. And, uh, and I'm on Coumadin and I'm bleeding and it's just turning into a deal. And I mean, I went from one thing to another. And uh, I finally, I don't know if I should tell all this or not. I finally went, I, I couldn't even walk. I mean, it hurt so bad. So I called my doctor. He said, go to the emergency room, let them check out what's going on. So I get down and check out, and the doctor come in there, and she said, boy, it's apparent that you're in a lot of pain. She said, on a scale, you know how they do on a scale of 1 to 10, where would you rate it? I said, about 9.8 right now. She said, I could tell you're in a lot of pain. I'm going to give you something to take the edge off the pain. Oh, yeah. <laughs> now nah, we're talking. So they put an IV in. They come back in a little bit later. And she said, I got a nurse coming in. She said, we're going to give you some fentanyl. <laughs> what? She said, fentanyl. I said, I don't want to leave her a drug addict. I mean, I prefer not to be a drug addict. She said, no, no, fentanyl works a little, you know, it's not street fentanyl. And, and we can only administer it in the, in the emergency rooms, not if you're admitted, but it works quick. It takes the edge off. I said, oh, okay. So they come in, shot it in. Now, listen, I know what it's like for things to spin this way. But this was spinning this way. And I was sitting there on the side of that bed, and I was kind of like, whoa. Wow. Oh. And the little guy come in with the wheelchair, so I need to take you up and do it. We're going to do a scan, see what's going on. I said, you know, sir, I don't think I need to move for a while. I'd prefer not to end up in the floor. And so they went in and they did the test, come back. The doctor said, look, you've got this hematoma on your hip muscle. She said, it's the largest one I've ever seen. She said, it's the size of a large cantaloupe. She said, the problem is we're fearful that you're bleeding internally and we got to keep you in. So I get admitted back into the hospital. I'm telling you, the South San Francisco Kaiser, they know me by my name. I have my own private bed in there. <laughs> now, this is what happened to me. I allowed the enemy to get into my thinking. You're done. You're done. If you live, it'll be a miracle. You're through. You're done. See, what happens is, is when I allow him into that, he starts setting up a high place in my mind. And the next thing I knew, I'd pretty well accepted. Physically, I'm done. I can't do it anymore. I'm just done. And so I kind of accepted that. And then there's an old prayer warrior in uh, New York. By the, her name was Margaret Banks, a Jamaican lady. And so she sends me a text and different stuff. And then she said, the Lord wanted me to ask you or tell you, why are you looking for the grave when you ought to be looking for the rapture? 
God is not near through with you yet. Matter of fact, she started telling me about the boundaries of ministry and what God was about to do, which is I'm already seeing come to pass. So when I got that text, I knew, I knew that my enemy was defeated. I'm not thinking that away anymore. I'm done thinking that away. This is overthinking that. Boy, I, I, if I lost this service here, we, we, listen, when I was pastor in Oklahoma, I don't, I don't want to offend anybody, and you got to stay politically correct and, and all this stuff. Matter of fact, I was preaching somewhere the other day, and, and I called small people something else. And boy, they were like, oh, Brother Morgan, that, you know, that's not politically correct. Well, I'm sorry. And uh, so now I forgot what I was going to say. What was I talking about? What's that? Oh, yeah. See, that's what I got you around for right there. And so uh, I was passing Oklahoma, and the, I got word that the three top medicine men had bound together to curse me with a heart attack. And so... Man, I'm like, great. And uh, next thing I knew, I'm having chest pains. So, okay, let's all sit down and we'll tell you what I want at my funeral. I want them to sing an old country song. It says, if you don't know me by now. And, uh, uh, man, it got to affecting me. And so I had Sam Emery come preach for me. And uh, he got to preaching that night. Matter of fact, he'll tell you the story. He got to preaching that night, and he stopped. And he turned around and looked at me, and he said, God said, enough is enough. I said, what? He said, when they go to trying to kill my preacher, that's enough. Now God's going to turn it back on them, what they sent to do to you. Victory. Victory. All I needed was to hear him say, the person say, victory. That was on Sunday. We were going to a conference in Tulsa, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. When I got to the conference, one of the ladies in our church who's connected to all this, she came in and said, Brother Morgan, man, this is the craziest stuff. I said, what? She said, the head medicine man who is in perfect health, runs marathons, so he fell over this morning with a massive heart attack, and heart attack and died. You know, God's already given you the victory. Quit letting the devil get into your mind and making you think that he's more powerful than God. He's the one that calls the shots. Now, 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 I am, I'm, I'm, I'm wrapping it up. I'm wrapping it up because I'm hungry. And uh, for a long time in my ministry, I thought for a while, to about two or three weeks ago, that the devil just at random could attack me. Now, let me explain to you. I've preached and taught over, don't engage your enemy and not plan on finishing him off. Because when you displace him, he's going to attack. Let me give you an example. For years, I was known throughout our fellowship as the guy to take the offering. And so the deal was, is as long as I was taking the offerings because God told me to take them, that was a different story. But then I got the reputation to take offerings, and so now I'm getting all the phone calls from departments at headquarters, we need you to take us an offering. Well, I'd get up there and try to take an offering. See, there's a difference in me trying to take an offering and then me obeying the Holy Ghost. And then it got to where by the time I got home, my finances were taking a beating. So my wife, she said, dear God, Mark, don't take any more offerings. She said, you stir that thing up and we have to pay the price for it. 
So I decided I'm not going to take another offering. No more offerings. So I was at the Louisiana camp, and Rick Marcelli's dad come walking up on the platform, and he said, Brother Morgan, I need to tell you something. I said, what? He said, God said, if you don't keep taking offerings, doing what he said, he'll raise somebody else up to do it. Great. But I just like, why would I want to keep doing this if it just opens me up to attack? Maybe you like being attacked, but I don't. And finally the other day, God said, that's not how this works. The enemy can't just get at you at random. You don't think I have enough power to protect you? That has to be the revelation of the end time. Because if it's not, we think the Antichrist and all the wickedness out there, it has the power to attack us and to hit us. I'm telling you right now, in the fear of God, God's power will protect you. God's name will protect you. God's authority will protect you. Quit letting the devil get it. Okay, all right, all right, all right, all right. Let me explain it this way. See, if he can get you thinking that, you won't engage him. You'll back away. You'll be like Saul in his armor and his, his soldiers. Oh, we don't want to fight that giant. Leave him alone. And th then he's won. He puts fear in your heart that if you go after this, if you actively pursue something, that, brother, I'm going, I'm going to unload on you. And then when that starts happening, we back away. Oh, I don't want that. Let's just leave it alone. That's just too much trouble. He's won. But when you go into it understanding, yes, there may be a few little bumps. Yes, there may be a few little repercussions. But God has to protect me from that. I'm trying to help somebody here today that the enemy's been lying to you and telling you you're bound by this and you'll never be free from this and you'll never overcome this. That's a lie coming from hell. God's already given you the power to overcome. He's already given you all the authority you need to rebuke it and to tell it to go. Don't go praying for victory. Just today, proclaim your victory. If you want to proclaim a victory, get to your feet right now. And open your mouth and speak. Speak, speak to the mountain. Isn't that what Jesus said? Speak to the mountain. Woo. I'm waiting on the feeling. It ain't about a feeling. It's about the word declaring it. And if you declare the word of God today, you need to walk in victory. Not a feeling, but you need to walk in victory right now. And my God shall supply all of my need according to his riches and glory. He's got everything that I need. Physical, spiritual, emotional, financial, all of it. He's got everything that I need. I am complete in him. Come on, come on, come on. Come, come confessing. Come speaking it right now. Come on, come on, come on. Come declaring it right now. And by his stripes, I might be. By his stripes, I am healed. Now, I, I'm, I'm going to say this, and this is another one that may cost me. Some of you are going to have to quit waiting on a Pentecostal celebrity to pray the prayer of faith over you. Now you think you can get your miracle then. Uh-oh. See, you're not really after a miracle. You just want a testimony. Oh, brother so-and-so pray for me one time. And I had a man attending our church and uh, David Shatt and I are just great friends. And so he, he, this elder come to me, he said, I won't, I won't be here this coming Sunday. I said, oh, okay, you know, all right. Don't you want to know where I'm going to go? Well, I mean, you know, you're faithful. I'm not. He said, I'm going to Brother Shatwell's church. I said, okay. And uh, he said, Brother Cole's going to be there, and I'm going to go over there and get my healing. Well, first of all, it irritated me. I said, let me ask you a question. He said, what's that? I said, 
is Brother Cole going to heal you or is God going to heal you? And he said, he looked at me like, well, God, of course. I said, okay. Was God in the building tonight? Well, yes. I said, then why aren't you healed? Oh, boy. We're waiting on the right man. We're waiting on the right woman. We're waiting on the superstar. I don't know why. You already got it. You just need to speak it. There is healing power in this building right now. I feel an angel stirring healing right now. Quit waiting on somebody to lay hands on you. And you inform that disease and you inform your enemy. I'm already healed. I'm already delivered. I'm already free. Come on, open your mouth and say it. Open your mouth and say it. Quit waiting on somebody to come jerk your neck out of place praying for you. Open your mouth and say it. You got the Holy Ghost. You got the Holy Ghost. In the Holy Ghost, in the person of Jesus Christ, you got it all. You are complete in him. Speak it. Speak it. Come on, just a few more seconds speaking it. Then we're going to change. Just, just keep saying it. Keep speaking it. I don't have to take authority. I already have it. I'm going to speak to that mountain in my life. And Jesus said it has to go. It all came through the man Christ Jesus. All right. All right. Get her attention. Did you speak it? Ma'am, did you speak it? And I believe it's done. So you know what the next step's going to be? For all of us that spoke it, we're going to rejoice. So I want you to rejoice, sister. If you spoke it, and you spoke it with faith, you decreed it. I'm not fighting for the victory, I'm fighting from the victory. Woo! If you did that, then rejoice right now over his victory for you. Go on, open your mouth and rejoice. Quit waiting on the goosebumps. Rejoice. Rejoice. That's it again, I say rejoice.